Why aren't you investing in Section 8 properties? I can tell you why, because you believe the myths. But think about it. If people are going through these lengths to keep you out of this niche, right? It's terrible. Don't do it. You don't want this. Don't you think it might be because they're trying to protect their piece of the pie? Get smart, people. Let me show you how to invest in Section 8, okay? We're going to get right into it. You're going to need pen, paper, calculators, because I'm going to break these numbers down for you. Everyone always asks me, how do we get started in Section 8? So I'm going to get you started with the first step. Actionable things that you can do right now to get started. The first thing you need to do is market research. I hope I have like some text or something going around here that says that. I hope I, hope I did that. Market research should be step one. And that's for any type of investment that you're going to do. You need to know what you're investing in. What's the best way to do it? Where's the best place to do it? So I'm going to show you where I invest. Don't y'all flood my market. Do not flood my market, okay? But I'm going to show you where I invest. If you don't know, I'm Ashley Lorraine, MED, also known as the real estate professor. And I professionally buy properties and portfolios on behalf of funds. So I'm the person behind the hedge fund who's doing all the buying for them, right? And I do this for personal people too. So if you have a 401k, any kind of savings, my minimum is going to be $100,000 in order for me to work with you and buy for you the way that I know that I can. But anyway, I'm going to show you how to do it yourself. So let me go ahead and start by letting you know the Section 8 program has a name, okay? It is the Housing Choice Voucher Program. And Section 8 is not the only program in it, okay? There's programs like Eden. There's programs for veterans. There's many other programs out there. But Section 8 is obviously the most notable one. So the first thing we need to do for our housing choice program, housing choice voucher program is some market research. So I'm going to go ahead and show, uh, share my screen and show you how I do this. Now, while I'm sharing my screen, I want you to understand some basic numbers. <clears throat> the average Section 8 house in the areas where I'm going to tell you to invest are about $70,000 and they are fully renovated at that price. They are fully renovated, ready to go. You might need to do a little cleanup, but you know, basic tenant move out. But other than that, they are ready to go. Okay, so keep that number $70,000 in your head. Now you might be thinking, I live in a place where there's no way I can get a house for $70,000. Well, same for me. I live in Texas, I live in Houston. There's not a lot of $70,000 houses around here. That's why I invest in the Midwest. Now, this is your market research, do your own, but here's mine. I like the Midwest because I can still buy a house for $70,000 and charge like a really high rent. For some reason, the Midwest is the demographic that still has this where you can buy cheap and rent high. So if my goal is cash flow, which is my goal in this niche, then I want to buy in places where I can buy a house really inexpensive and rent it out for much higher than what my mortgage is gonna be on it so that I can make money, okay? So let me show you the Midwest. Right now you are where I grew up in good old Cleveland, Ohio, okay? Can't get more Midwest than Cleveland. Now there are other areas there too. I'm not gonna get into it for the sake of keeping this video short, but you can Google Midwest, okay? Now, one area where I like to invest in in Cleveland is 44112, okay? This is like a suburb outside of Cleveland. Um, it's still up and coming. All of Cleveland is pretty good, but this is just where I do it, okay? So you want to just start simple. Go to Zillow, and you can just go in the search bar here in Zillow like I'm doing, and you can just put in Cleveland. Now, I put in the specific zip, zip code that I know that I like to invest in, okay? So let's go back to that number we talked about, which is $70,000. So I know I'm looking for houses that are going to be $70,000 or less. Now, for the sake of this video, for the wow factor, right, I want to do this with a $50,000 house because I just want to show you guys how much money can be made. But $70,000 is average. I just happen to invest in a market that's lower than the average, right, because I want to buy an expensive and rent it up high. Okay, so put in the search. I put in uh, the area code, the zip code that I want, and I want it for up to fifty k. So let's search and see what we can find here. Lots of inexpensive houses. If you're looking for houses that are inexpensive in the Cleveland area, let me know. I uh, work with many, many wholesalers. We can help you with that. Don't worry about that. All right, this house looks good, right? Looks like I don't have to do a whole lot of work on it. Let's pull it open. Now in section eight, you do wanna have more bedrooms, right? The more bedrooms you have, the more money you make. They pay you based on bedrooms. This is only a three one. I usually like to have a minimum of a four one. But here's another tip in Cleveland. They have attics. And as long as the attic has a closet 
and a point of egress, which could just be a chain ladder that they can put out the window in case of an emergency, it counts as a bedroom. You can also do this with basements. Now I'm looking at the basement windows here and I know I probably won't be able to make this into a bedroom because the windows don't open, but look, there's an attic. So although this is listed as a 3-1, it is technically a 4-1 by Section 8 standards and the, the standard that I'll bring it up to. All right, so let's look at the pictures here. Pretty good shape. Okay, here's what we want, the interior. Interior looks good. I don't have a lot of work to do. Now, I told you guys earlier, the average is 70,000. At 42.9, I'm already like, what? $20,000 less than where I want to be, more than 20, like 28,000 less than where I want to be. So I'm cool if this needs a little bit of work. Um, yeah, oh, this is easy. Okay, yep, yep. I'm just quickly looking for me. I'm just looking for walls, floors, make sure everything's there. Boom, at it. Bedroom ready, baby, let's go. Okay, sorry, I'm getting a little excited. <laughs> All right, so cool, cool, cool. This has everything that I need. Perfect, 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 perfect. We can, we can do this. We can do this. We can make these numbers work. All right. So now we know that we have a house that uh, will work for section eight. Let me show you how we run the numbers to make sure that this is going to be profitable. So the first thing that I want to do is I want to check this address out on the section eight website. It used to be section eight.com and now it's affordablehousing.com. So you will need to create a free account on here. And I'm just going to throw this address in real quick. And this is just going to tell me how much money I can expect for Section 8 to pay me. Remember, it's four bedrooms because we have that added. So let's go ahead and get our estimate. Nice. Just what I thought. Okay. So Section 8, typically in my experience, is going to pay you the higher number. Actually, sometimes I get even higher than that. But this video is not for that. I'll do another video about it. I want to stay on point. Okay, so let's say we'll go ahead and get 1276 for this property. Okay, I'm just going to write that down. I hope you're writing it down too so you can do these numbers with me. All right, 1276 a month for this property and I'm paying 42,900 for it. Um, let's bump it up to 50 just in case I have to like, you know, do a little bit of work or, you know, I want to, I don't know. I just, just... We call it just in case money, right? Okay, so we'll bump it up to 50,000 to keep our numbers even and to give ourselves a nice, big, huge cushion um, just in case we need to use it. All right, so cool. We got our average rent. Good to go. The next step is I'm going to see how much my mortgage is going to be if I were to finance this. Now, I like to buy my houses creatively subject to owner financing. So I'm coming in less. I don't really like to do the whole bank thing, but a lot of you guys will be using a bank or a hard money lender. Totally fine. Let's just put the numbers in. So I'm going to ask for a loan for, let's say 50,000, right? Because um, I'm probably going to have to do some work to it. Down payment is going to be about 5%. Now, some of you guys might get the FHA loan at 3.5%, which is even better, but for the sake of this, I'm going to go with the higher, okay? Um, and if you're doing a hard money loan, sometimes that can go up to 20%. So you can come onto the same website I'm on and just play with the numbers, uh, amortizationcalc.com. But for the sake of this, I'm going to just pick the middle, right? Not the highest, not the lowest, just right in the middle. Interest rate, let's say we get about 6%, 30 year term. Uh, the property taxes, you can look this up at the um, county website. I already know it's a thousand because I own houses, a bunch of houses over there already. Home insurance, I already know they're going to show me love, uh, but it's about a thousand dollars per year. Um, there's no HOA. So anyway, when I calculated this, it tells me that my monthly P&I, that's just the principal and interest that goes to the mortgage company is $284.79. Um, but then the total monthly payment, because remember, although we have the principal and interest, we also have to pay taxes and insurance, which is why I added it down here. So all in, all in, everything paid for is going to be $451.45. Now I'm going to try to share my calculator. I've seen in the past where sometimes the video blanks this out. So you need to have your own calculator or phone out at this time, just in case mine isn't showing, but I am going to go ahead and pull it up anyway in hopes that it's not showing a big black box. <laughs> All right. So um, let's go ahead and just run the numbers real quick. Okay. So we know that our section eight is going to pay us $12.76 per month, right? And then we need to subtract what we're going to have to pay back for the loan, the pity, which is about 452. All right, so our cash flow is 824. If you are new to real estate, you probably don't understand that that is a 
beautiful cash flow number. <laughs> if you're not new to real estate, well, duh, this is why we've been doing Section 8, people. Do you see this cash flow right here? Welcome, okay? All right. <laughs> so 824 is the cash flow. That is after I'm paying back the loan, after I'm paying taxes and insurance, this is how much I walk away with every single year. I'm sorry, month, 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 month. So if you multiply that by the year, okay, that's an extra almost $10,000 per year that I'm making just renting this property out. And then if you do that over 30 years, which I'm going to save you all the math. I just get excited about this kind of stuff. Um, you can see where we're going with that. All right. So I'm going to go back to our 824 um, because I want to make a point with that. All right. So we were making 824 per month in cash flow. Now, some of you guys are going to say, well, what if I need a property manager? Cool. Just subtract it. Okay. The property manager is going to charge you 10% of the rent. So if our rent was twelve uh, seventy six, let's say they're charging us one twenty five per month. So we're going to subtract that one twenty five per month. That leaves us with six ninety nine, which is still excellent cash flow. Okay, everything here is just good. Don't even, it's good. All right. And then for me, if you're going to be working with me or if I'm coaching you, like kind of how I am right now in this uh, video, then I'm going to ask you to put some money aside for reserves. Okay. So I'm going to ask you to put at least $100 per month aside just for reserves, just in case something happens as they do. You can do more, you can do less. Your cash flow goals are yours. I like the high cash flow. So $100 per month for me is fine. Uh, but if you want to do more, do more. I mean, fine. You might even want to just say, I'm going to take my first three rent payments and I'm just going to collect them to the side and that'll just be my reserves for the year. Whatever works for you, works for you. So for me, I would just do another $100 off of this. And I'm at what, about $600 per month in cash flow. And that is excellent cash flow, hence why we all do Section 8, okay? Um, so I hope this was helpful for you. I hope this helps you understand why we like to invest in Section 8 for cash flow. And I really hope it helps you understand the importance of market research, understanding where you're investing and why. Okay, so that's why I made sure I had that property management fee in there because if you're like me, 2,000 miles away from the property, well, you can't be up there every time something happens, um, but the property manager can. Stick along. I am going to be doing an entire series on Section 8 investing. I know you have pressing questions. You're going to ask me about tenants and what if they tear up the house and how do I insure myself and who's going to do the property inspection and contractors and all of that. I've been doing this for almost a decade, okay? I got you. I'll cover all of that in other videos. Leave comments. Let me know what else you want to see, okay? Now, my Section 8 course is $9,997, but for my birthday, for my birthday, I do an $18 special every single year. This is my fourth annual birthday giveaway where I pick a class that I have uh, that I teach and I just give it away for $18. So if you're interested in learning more about Section 8, the $18 class is in the link. Um, go ahead and click that link, sign up for it. $18 and I'm going to be teaching you the entire Section 8 process. I'll stuff as much as I can in there um, during the training for it. We're going to have the live training October 7, 2023. But if you can't make the live training, I always do a recording or a replay so you can have that um, in case you can't make it. So $18. Okay, it's way better than $9,997. But anyway, I digress. I'll see you guys in the next video. Leave me some comments, subscribe. Do not miss this series.